pull around. There it is. <laughs> Happy days. We'll just get straight on with it. Right then, guys. Welcome to another episode of Hooked. My name's John Murray and I'm an angling addict and today I'm fishing near the Northern River Masters on the River Calder at Methley Estates. Now I was hoping to actually draw on all tough things today because it's a lot deeper, it's whip fishing, um, the roach fishing has been really good down there but in typical fashion I've drawn a peg that I don't really fancy. It looks beautiful but I've got about three foot of depth um, so yeah the whip is out. I've set up 14 and a half meter pole and basically an 11 foot feeder rod and that's it i'm going with no other options today so i'm probably either gonna ground bait feeder it maggot feeder it i'll try the ground bait to start with um but looking at the peg i don't know this time of year we've been having a few cold snaps two and a half foot of water it's dodgy you know i think that most of the fish are going to be shoaled up in the deeper water so this peg what am i likely to get out of it probably a few perch maybe some dace maybe maybe if i'm really lucky a chub right i'll show you the peg so i'm sure you'd agree that is a stunning view for the day it's going to be a little bit noisy uh, we've got the hydro turbine over there in the corner the way of coming down but quite literally on the inside down here and even out to 14 and a half meters where i've plumbed up roughly where my finger is now it's just stood still there's absolutely no flow there's a tiny bit of flow right over um or probably from midway to right over but again there's no depth to it you know i've got a, like a one count on the uh, on the bomb so i don't know i just don't fancy the peg at all right with that disappointment out of the way it is what it is i've got to make the most of it so i hope you enjoy the videos guys if you do thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hit the notification bell so you don't miss an episode every time I upload one. Right, it's time to get set on my box, think about what we're going to do, how we're going to attack this and get some fish out hopefully. Stay tuned. Right, I'm just going to start out on a little black cap maggot feeder today. Just waiting for the all in now. It's 11 o'clock. Don't know whether we'll hear time so we might just have to start. It's so noisy. If I'd been on any other peg, I'd have balled it in. But on this peg, I think I'm just going to play it safe. I'm going to cup in loose feed and I've mixed up plenty of uh, pro natural dark ground bait today. Just have to see if they're going to feed on it. It's one minute past. Can't hear any kind of shout. Right, I'm going to kick off. Right, can't hear anything. Let's go. So I'm going right over to the flow and I'm going to clip up. So there's so little flow in here today, I'm getting away with a 0.75 ounce tip in the feeder. I'm only fishing the 11 foot rod and uh, I've gone all the way across pretty much into the, what looks to be the biggest part of the flow. The further back we come towards me, it's starting to go back up river. So it's just impossible to fish a stick or anything like that out there today. There's potentially a bite on the tip. First indication. First bite on a single maggot. I've got a fish on. And there's what? It's a roach. I might have to fish feed them more than I would have liked today. You never know. I can get a few fish out on this to start with, and then we'll maybe uh, try and put some bait in on the pole line, see what happens on it. I did bring a bag of uh, dead maggots and pinkies with me today, 
to put in the feed if it was going to be balling into deep water but there's just no need for them in here so I can go with the live maggots, live pinkies and castor and hemp and uh, see what happens on those. It's such shallow water, there's no depth to get down into. I've not had to make really stiff balls up or anything like that. I can have them break up quite quickly. Now, there's another little tap on the tip and it's a drop back actually. So have we got a fish on there? Not coming instantly these baits. I can't feel this fish. There is one. Oh yeah, we've got one on. There's off. Seen a little pommy. Need to wait for that bite. Right, so it's a bit slow on the maggot feeder. I'm maybe putting a few too many maggots in. So I'm going to go on the ground bait feeder and give it a whirl. Just see how the peg reacts to ground bait. So we had a 30 gram black cap on before. I'm going to put a 28 gram Nisa on. It's only a small job. There's another rapid bite on the tip. So there are a few fish there, but they're definitely a little bit fickle. Two fish in 35 minutes is not uh, very good going. So I'm going to come off the feeder, have a little look on the pole line. Put some bait on it, see what happens. The wind is really getting up, swirling around out there. I think it's okay to fish the pole though. So I think what I'll do is, I'll just put a small ball, tangerine size to start with in. Pop a bit of hemp, caster, and maggots over the top. See if we can get a bite. Not the easiest thing to do when you've got a bank right up high behind you. I'm actually going to fish this slightly off to my right because it was a little bit deeper not much maybe six inches just pop that in there Put a good cup of hemp in as well oh a third of a cup of large cup of hemp so probably about 75 mil just a sprinkling of casters and a few more maggots Wind's gusting
Okay, so onto the rig. It's uh, quite an old school float. It's a 4x14 Trabuco, body up pattern. Very fine tip on it, cane tip. I've just got that shotted with number 10s basically down the line, so just got a few slightly below where I'm fishing, which are uh, just making up the capacity. And then just got strung out number 10s all the way down to a size 20 B511 hook. Um, sorry, the last one is a number 11 dropper. I really don't know if we're going to catch anything on this pool at all. It's been quite a long lash. Um, which is really just to combat any wind. Just let the float roam. So it's actually going back up river on this inside line. Whether the fish are here or not, I don't know. Whether we can get any here or not, I don't know. Not only is it flowing back up river, it's also coming back towards me. So I may need to shorten the lash off and go down to the top two. So it's only three foot deep. It's just float is just meandering around out there. It's not going back upstream, it's like coming back blowing back downstream. I don't know whether you can get any kind of presentation on this at all today. It's not what I wanted to be doing. Fishing 14 and a half metre pool. In fact the flow is sort of coming back towards me as well. It means I think I might have to uh, shorten the lash on this. So try and keep it out. Oh, well we've just cut some baiting. Just lay it back in. See what happens. It's all over the place, the wind's blowing the line. Definitely gonna have to shorten this off. It's so strange in here, sort of big slack back eddy type area. Okay, well we're gonna have to try and fish this off the top two then. Oh we're definitely trotting upstream. Oh, fish. We're in. this lovely dish let's see if we can just hold tight again try not to let it drop but just Held it still last time. Maybe that's the only way I'm going to get any kind of presentation in this rather strange floor. Ooh, sure that was another bite then. Yeah, that was another bite, so just need to be a bit quicker on these. Yeah, we're in. We're putting a bit of bait down, has worked. Things are looking up. It's a roach. So I may introduce some more bit, but we'll just see how we go. I 
another bite. There's definitely a few fish coming set over that bait now. Nice light strung out rig. Offering some decent presentation out there. As long as we can hold fairly still. Gusting wind though. Spotting the float difficult, the light levels are changing on the water. This isn't easy. There we go. Another one. I'm quite rapid of these bites. That's another plump roach. Lovely fish. Some fish like that down there. Gonna give them some more feed. Gusting wind is certainly making presentation difficult. Spotting the float difficult. I think right now we're just waiting on that bait to settle that I've just put in. I had a bite on the last couple of but last couple of minutes. But Trying to present the bait. Let's hold the rig still. It's so hard. Just don't know which side of the float to put the pole. Right now, because the wind's blowing downstream, I'm having to go upstream of it. But the float is still trying to track upstream. I'm going to feed a little line down to me right hand side of you. See if anything's really close in. Fish off the top kit. There's actually a decent pace down here. But I think the depth is all wrong. For this rig at least, anyway. It's 
see if we can hold it back. You never know. Maybe a bonus perch or two down there. I'll leave a few maggots on it. Right. Let's get back out one. a bite. So we'll come settled on the ground bite again. Just got to get them coming confidently. I'd like to loose feed over the top but manhandling the pole off the back bank and the gusting wind really discounts trying to feed by catapult. Unless it settles down, just see if anything will sit on this bit. Oh yes, fish on. Swirling wind's a nightmare. Don't know what this is, but it's tramming. Oh my goodness. It's a decent fish. Can't stop it. What on earth have we up to here? Whatever it is, oh, it's tugging. It's a blooming barbel. I'm not expecting to look anything like this today. Definitely unexpected. Let's try and bring him backwards. Is there is yards of elastic out. Went like a cap. <laughs> Could be a chub. Maybe. Or is it a bream? Expecting to talk anything this big. What is it? It's come off. Another 20 elastic. I'm not sure it's up right. Be fell hooked. Could be an eyed, big eyed, maybe. Definitely risk losing him. Which I could definitely do without. But I've got no control on this fish.
still can't work out what it is. It's just wallowing around in front of me. It definitely doesn't look hooked right. Put much more pressure on it. Up went or go. Please come here, come here, come here, come here. Had him up on the surface a couple of times. Ah! What was that? That was so dodgy. Couldn't do anything with it. Ah! I could swear. Rig's a mess. What a nightmare. The worst thing is, I don't even know what it was. I just couldn't make out what it was. Oh, that's fortunate. The rig's out. The hook pulled. Definitely a foul looked fish there. There's something decent down there. Well, we're in again. Oh, yeah, I dropped the pole. Down, something a bit more normal. Nice days. Is it a roach? Could be a roach. Yep. Nice stamp roach. It didn't take long after losing that quality fish to get a nice stamp roach. We didn't get the bonus out, but hopefully the fish have turned back up over the bait. They didn't seem to like it straight on top of the reds. It seems to take a while for them to uh, come back over it. Let's fish this out for a bit now before we introduce any more feed. the wind's not rippling on the surface out there you can spot the float not too bad but when it ripples you don't know whether you need well you probably need a black tip on but when it's not rippling you could do with a white one oh there's a little half dink on the float there difficult to know what to do with the feed just not getting the bites consistently we're getting a few bites they're not they're not taking confidently I may switch on to pinky I'll try caster maybe they want caster oh the wind come on we're in. Small fish. Right, I'm just going to try a single pinky on the pole line. Let's 
drag caster. The floor is just wallowing around out there. No matter where I put the pole tip, the float just seems to come back under it. No real instant bite on caster. Impossible to see the float right now because of the ripple. And that was a bite. Definitely had a bite on caster there, but I'm not convinced it's any faster than maggot. Not that this is fast fishing right now. get a bite. So I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know whether to feed, not to feed. But if plenty more baiting, surely it's just going to kill the peg stone dead. bite on maggot, no bite on single pinky, I'll try caster again. put any additional feed in and we had that big fish on whatever it was and a quick roach straight after it and now the pegs just died there should have been enough feed down there to get us half a dozen fish at least sure where to go with this now. I think maybe one last try out along with the maggot and me feed a line shorter on the inside just so we don't ruin the long line. Go out on the feeder, come back and have a look down here, maybe seven meters something like that. I'll plumb it up, see if I can find a similar depth. When I plumbed around this morning didn't seem to vary greatly. Pretty shallow everywhere. Let's give this one last chance out there. No, it just seems to have switched off. Whether the hole Part of the river switched off, that midday type of thing. I don't know. I would have thought fish would have been coming on the feed now. It's one o'clock. So let's have a little plumb around. See if we can come in shorter, put some feed down on it.
Yep. A little special line down here. What's that? Five meters? Five meters. Top two plus two. Okay, we'll give that inside line a chance to settle. Go back out on the feeder for a bit. Rather than going right across in the floor, I don't think there was any real benefit to that. We'll um, go a little bit beyond where we were fishing the pole line. Go with the ground bait feeder still. So I'm just going to pick a point. Out there, middle-ish, probably uh, halfway across the river that. I'll just re-clip back up. Well, the fish on. I thought the line was swimming upstream. The fish barely moved the tip. Not 75 ounce tip. And we've got a roach. Right, well, Ricky Matthews has just been down. Told me that about six pounds winning the section down there, or at least we think it is. Um, I've got nowhere near that. I've probably got, I don't know, seven or eight fish, have I? So, what, maybe a pound and a half at best, but uh, yeah, I mean, I never fancied these pegs, they've got nine or ten foot down below me, and you'd have to say, at this time of year, with the weather the way it is, pretty cold, I've got my big jacket on, that the fish are going to be in the deeper water, but you never know, we may get a few come short. Can't work out what's going on with the feeder though. <laughs> Flows upstream here. Well, that was a pretty quick bite. Small fish though. Oh, another half decent bite on the tip though. Maybe we're getting a few come in now. Ground bait feeder working a bit better. Still not taking confidently though. Yeah, fish on. I'm getting some minute bites out there. Even with this light tipping. There are fish there, and they are responding to the ground bait feeder. Decent bait. Nice roach that one, bonny fish. Right, so I just had another nice little roach there on the feeder. Um, the bites are a bit slow to be honest. They're coming few and far between, but the fish are there and they are responding to the ground bait. But this ground bait on the inside has been stood for half an hour, 40 minutes now. And I want to have a look over it. So if there's nothing doing, we'll just go back on the feeder, I think. Let's see if we can catch something down here. The flow in this peg is just so weird. It's literally flowing back around at me all the time. It's just a massive back eddy. Right, well, there's literally no sign of a fish down this inside edge.
I'll have one more trot through with the pinky. Then I think all I can do is put a load of bait on that long line. Continue to fish the feeder because we know we can get a few fish out on that. And have a look on the long line again. When that bait's settled. So the time for a finesse approach is over. Just gonna get the bearings where to put this ground bit. Ground bait's breaking up. So that's not really a problem in this depth of water. It's got a lot of hemp in it. Because I can't hold over a particular area, it doesn't matter too much as long as it's on the roughly the right line. That'll do us. So we'll go back on the tip, give that half an hour to settle. See if we can get anything else out on this. I'm still getting the odd bite on the feeder, but they aren't coming very quickly. And when they do come, they're so rapid and they're not even marking the maggot. Quick jags on the tip and I've missed the last couple. And there's another knock. Tip's straightened up. Is that fish on? Fish is on. Better bite that one. Drop back. This fish is coming in all sideways. We've actually foul hooked him. That's another one, I think. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. Fish is on. Pretty much on that straight away. That fish. They're not a bad stamp, these roach. Right, well, the bite are kind of tailed off. It's just sporadic as to whether you get one or not. So I'm going to have a look on the long pole now. Well, that looked like a dip on the float then. Yeah. Fish. <laughs> I 
nice roach. Yeah, another one. Let's see if we can string a few together now. Well, that fish took some temps in. Okay. I honestly thought this swim was going to switch on. There's certainly fish there, but trying to tempt them into baiting is so tricky with the floor conditions out there. If I place the rig slightly off to the right and I pick up the floor and it moves upstream, if I place it straight in front of me, it's fairly still. Both methods have produced fish, but there's no figuring out exactly how they want it. It's like the fish want some bait, but they don't want some bait. They want some feed, but they don't want some feed. It's strange. directly out in front of me now and it's stood pretty still and I've had bites sort of instantly there but even the bites on the float this you know really quite sensitive cane top float is uh, they're still dropping that I'm barely touching the maggot today certainly not bursting them that's a bite. got about an hour left. I just don't know if I can put enough of these fish together to do anything. I'm told there's still not that much out. But you just never know if people are telling the truth. I can't believe people have struggled as much as I have in here. Fish, finally. Rig's coming backwards. Just trying to catch the floor with that light strung out shot in. And that is another fish. So I dropped him further down or further upstream. Another little roach. Another one. Just let that run on its way. Again, a bit smaller though.
wind has just swirled all the float control an absolute nightmare that's another fish again running down the peg oh up the peg <laughs> It's upstream, but it's downstream to me. <laughs> That's not a bad one. Banetting. Catching steady now. Let's just have a quick look down the inside again. See if anything came and sat on this bit. That's a fish. It's a nice fish. Can I make a bit of weight short now? And I just can't seem to get another one out. Yes, fish. Got an extra section. Ah, oh, it's off. Let's see if we can get another one long. Just no flow straight in front. And it really starts picking up pace above me, heading back up the river. There's nothing there, so we need to run it through, I think. The lighting is just awful. No matter what colour float you've got on now, very, very difficult to see. That's it, we've got one. Recent. On the pinky. It's 
a decent stamp watch. Fishing short certainly haven't been any better than fishing long really. It's, uh, I thought we might have got a few more fish on this late doors. The wind is just all over the place, making pre presenting the rig an absolute nightmare. And these fish want it absolutely perfect today. Nothing again. One last look out long then. And I think that'll be time. Let's get into that bit of floor. See if we can spot that float. That's been half the battle as well. Just not able to see clearly out there in these conditions but that is a fish very quickly I think that's time guys, tiny little roach to finish on, so by my reckoning I've had about 26-27 fish, we we'll say they're about 2 ounces average, what's that work out at, 20 ounce, 40 ounces, Let's go with 50 ounces, somewhere of that order. Maybe three pound-ish. Right, I'll get wrapped up. We'll see you at the weigh-in. It's been going weird. Put it straight in front of me, it stood still. Move it to the right, and it's going that way, like mad. It's flowing, flowing like mad down inside here. But, uh, have you? Yeah. I had a few on the tip plate, but it's been hard work trying to tempt a fish. Oh, yeah. When the first got it, the final put that screw in. Yeah. It's a bit further down there, but dummy Craig. 3-9. Well some lovely little roach there, but not enough once again. It's been a difficult peg to try and conquer. Right guys, well that's it. Um, what can I say? It's been a really, really difficult day trying to fish out in that blustery wind all day. We've had a few fish on the feeder, a few fish on the long pole, and a few fish short at the end there. Uh, I kind of wished I'd really balled it in earlier on because I think the fish did come and sit over it, although they were still tricky to try and catch. You know, they just wanted the presentation absolutely immaculate today and that was awkward to do out in those conditions. Um, yeah, so what have I had? £3.9. Craig, upstream of me, or downstream if you go with which way the flow was going in my peg, uh, he's had £3.13. I think he's had a couple of big perch, but he's had to fish feeder all day basically. So he's not enjoyed it either. Uh, these pegs, yeah, not very good below the weir, directly below the weir at this time of year, I don't think. From what I've heard, there's been about eight pound out further down. I think he's had a big hide in that catch. But I'll get all the results up for you now so you can see who come where. Until the next one, thanks for watching and tight lines.